This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, baby, we're back. What's up, bro? Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end, of course. How you doing, my man? All right. Uh, I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Uh, uh, every time I turn around here at the house, I yeah. have uh, something falling apart. Oh, man. Hey, yeah, yeah. I mean, fucking like having, you, a good, having a good day, your gut is dangling because your gut is fucked up. Enjoy your day. <laughs> Thought you had the whole day free. Not even close, guy. <laughs> I didn't even tell you this a couple weeks ago. That's yeah, about three weeks ago. Yeah. The gate. Did I tell you the story? The gate to the to my where you where you come into the 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 driveway. It didn't close. It didn't close flush. It was just off a little bit, you know, like the, the, the they, they're swing doors. So when they uh-huh. close, they don't close flush. So I had a guy come out and fix it. Yeah. On a Tuesday. On a Saturday, I'm leaving with my family and we pull up to the gate and the gate is, is opening. And all of a sudden, ping, boom, the gate falls down. Right huh. now, this is, this is a, this ain't no light gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a solid gate falling down. Now, if anybody was on the other side, they would have been killed. You, right? Now, you're talking about, normally it, it, it opens out and closes out, and instead the whole thing collapsed off the hinges? One of the doors just, boom. Just fell, oh. fell off oh, the whole hinge. That's It'd a- be like... A door at your house just yeah. falling off the hinge, but imagine the door's a thousand pounds, right? Oh, what are we, can you imagine a dog, lady walking a little dog, and a dog? Dog, falls under my that? kid, my oh, kid. Hey, listen, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I was going yeah. with a dog. It's a comedy show, but yeah, geez, anyone, <laughs> you know? Can you imagine? Oh man, fucking gate. Oh god, that'd be bad. So, so what? The, so who do you call? You call the same guy? I call the gate company, yeah. and of course, you know, they had said that the motor needed replacing, but they gave it a one or two years. You, you ever wonder how they estimate this stuff? When yeah. when when yeah. they come over and they look at an appliance and they go, "Yeah, you got about another one two years out of it." How do they know? I, it's it blows my mind, and they're usually dead on. Like, is there anything that you are really knowledgeable of that you no. could look? Not not one thing. Not even like. Uh, like a, a sweater. Can't you look at a sweater and go, two more seasons? <laughs> then, you, <laughs> then you look homeless if you're wearing that fucking thing, right? I, I mean, seriously, that's your, you could do warranty on clothes, guy, I think. Uh, you listen, know? listen, do you, you ever look at a piece of clothing? I mean, just sidestep in here. Yeah, you ever look yeah. at a piece of clothing and go, uh, it's lost its life? You ever look at a shirt and go, it's got more no more life in it? Yeah, well. Do, 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 do clothes die? I, for me, you know how my, like, I just, I'm not even, not making this up. Right before the show started, I had a Deep V t-shirt on, which I like. It shows the chains, and I finally got them back. I left them at my mother's. She was going to mail them, but I'm like, can't trust UPS with the fucking <laughs> chains, you know? <laughs> so I got the chains back, and I go to do the show, and she goes, guy, this shirt's too old and too short on you. It's disgusting. And, and she goes, it has paint. I go, it's got a little paint at the bottom, and you don't see me from the waist up, so you don't know that it's short. And she's like, throw it out. You have a million T-shirts. You look like a loser. So that, in its own way, becomes the death of the T-shirt. You know? <laughs> yeah, but if, if she didn't say that, how long are you going to wear that? What, another two years? Oh, man, yeah. Like, I wear them until you can, like, I got a gray one that you can start to see your skin through it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so you're you're wearing it until basically it rips apart. <laughs> oh, dude. One time I was in the writer's room and Kevin James, he goes, dude, I could, Petey, I could see your nipples through that T-shirt. So then that one, so that one died. That one got buried. Yeah. So usually somebody brings it to my attention that the shirt is uh, fucking, you know. Having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, totally. I, I do the same thing. I, I mean, yeah. I get I get a lot of wear out of my clothes, and I just yeah. don't know what the turnover rate is. Lana will normally go, yeah. the 
that that shirt, that sweatshirt's over. It's faded. It's done. Okay. And I'm and I'm sitting there going, faded. I thought I was just getting into it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like it's finally starting to be custom. You know? <laughs> you know? Although you wear a lot of clothing that's uh, how do I put it? It's show stopping. It can only be worn one or twice before we start going again with the curtain blazer. <laughs> with the- <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. so, so anyway, you're call you're back on the phone. And, all right, even so, these gay people gave you a warranty on the uh, motor. Uh, nobody said nothing about the fucking hinge, man. No more, no warranty. There's no warranties. He just said I gave I you fixed, a, a life. Yeah, I gave I gave it some more life. Uh, you got about one or two years left on the motor, and then we got to change it because it's 20 years old and a lot of wear and tear. I said okay. Uh. Oh, let me close this door. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of in and out. You think about some of the high-end uh, clients that lived in the house before you, and there's just a lot of people moving and shaking, coming up and down. Yeah, there's there's a lot of opening and closing. So I said, okay, whatever. Uh, thing pops off the hinges. I call the guy, and I go, well, what the hell? What's going on? I just, the door fell off the hinge. Of course, nobody takes responsibility. Well, you know, I did tell you that motor's on its way. I, I, yeah, but you told me one, yeah. two years, not not Mot- three, four the days. Motor's still running. It's on the ground, <laughs> off the hinge, still running. You were right about the motor. You don't, you don't, you don't peek over at the hinge while after you're done working on the fucking motor guy. I, I, it's like they don't. It, it, he goes, it's a coincidence. Coincidence. The thing was working working fine yeah. for the whole time I've been here. I have you guys come out on a Tuesday, Saturday. The things on the floor, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, and, and by the way, even if he didn't come out and it was going to be on the floor on Saturday, that's why you're out here. I'm supposed to be able to open this and go, well, it's not going to fall off the hinge because <laughs> the guy just came and looked at it. What the? F- Am I wrong to think that? You look at the motor. I'm again, I'm back to it. You look at the motor and go, oh, it's old. I better check the whole gate. Nobody goes beyond anything anymore, bro. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Yeah, they don't do a full scope of work unless right. it's in the, um, you know, the request. I go, it's just mm. like, yeah. I requested that the thing shut, but while you're out there, take a look around. You know, right. it's like, it's like, okay, my radiator don't work, but check the oil. I mean, would it kill you to go, you probably get about two more years, but I got to be honest, man, just for the safety, I see you got some little ones around here. Like that hinge is kind of, you know, it could last two years. It could go tomorrow. You know, whoa. I don't know. Although we'll be doing this cast and you'll go. So the guy's trying to sell me on a fucking hinge now. <laughs> right. Here we go. I bring him out for the thing and now, now for the motor and now I'm buying new hinges. Get out of here. You. Right? <laughs> you can't win. You can't win. Right? Can't win. Can't win. So I, I told him, come on out and fix it. The door, you know, fl- things on the floor. He comes out, fix it. It doesn't shut. But, uh, and this was three weeks ago, doesn't shut. He charges me for the coming out to, f- to fix the door on the floor. Huh. He charged me to put it back up. Yeah, well, what I mean? Just he put, he hooked it back up? Yeah, he, he put the thing back up on the hinge and oh. soldered it, whatever he did. Soldered and he, yeah, what, 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 whatever, whatever. He, ch- he, ch- he yeah. charged me for the work. That, but you, the minute you say Sada, I'm sorry. What, what do you think he fixes gates for a hobby guy? The gate broke. He's got. I, I'm. I'm confused. You got, he's got to come out. The, he fixed the motor, and now a no, separate. No, no. Listen, uh, I'm just gonna blanket this by. The reason the gate fell off the hinge is because he tinkered with the hinge. He had to tinker with the hinges to do the to 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 get the door to shut right. Right. Uh, yeah. So. In, in my eyes, it's his fault the thing fell off the, the hinge in the first place. So then he comes out and he charges me f- to put it back up when we both know your work caused it. Well, so I'm like, so I'm like, you know what? Get another guy out here. All right. This is the, this is the this is the dilemma. Now this is the quote unquote top guy that does this stuff. Jake. So I go to. The, the gate guy. So I go to the second gate guy. Come out, give me an estimate. Yeah. How much it is to replace the motor and the whole thing. The guy's price was 
a third more than the first guy that, that screwed up the gate. So this guy wants to charge me a third more for the basically the same type of work. Now, come on, man. Not, how the hell do you come out, look at it, and all of a sudden it's a third more? So now I got to go back to the original guy and have him do the work because I ain't paying a yeah. third more for this, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, yeah, but does the guy, the original guy know you went dancing around looking for a new guy? See, that's a, that's key. That's key. So I, saying, I, I, I do a dance. I'm not the type of guy. And I think a lot of people, they don't get second, third estimates. You know, <clears throat> they just go with the first one and that's right. it. Right. I shop around and that's that's due to my father because my father would go to Home Depot and look at uh, Armor All and it's four ninety nine at Home Depot oh, yeah. and then he would drive seven miles to Lowe's to see what it's over there and it's four seventy nine. Right? <laughs> he he said he saved twenty cents this guy. Right. Yeah. So it adds up over a lifetime though, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, here's the thing. Even though you go back to your original guy who you're annoyed that recharged you for fixing the gate, the fact that you shopped around and realized it would be so much more expensive to go anywhere else, that makes you feel a little better. It doesn't make you like your guy more, but it makes you go, all right, well, it could be worse. I could be getting ripped off, by, you know what I'm saying? So it works both ways. It's a nice, it's a good thing to do. Even if you don't end up with a lower price, you feel better about the price you're paying. I feel like I'm getting a deal now. <laughs> how, well, listen, how did, how did the, <laughs> bro, what the, ah, he probably owns the other business too. By the night, you own two gay businesses. The other one charges. Right, he'll be right back. He picks up the other phone. First gate guy. Yeah. So, listen, what about the gate itself? How did it fall off the hinges? Do you know? I mean, did it snap? Is it old or did it like? Just snap! I, I, I got to be old, or, or, or like the way new, the, it, yeah. the way they adjusted it probably was you know like sometimes if you adjust the door and you close it and the adjustment ain't right, it's like you know it's a grinding and maybe it, it you know for yeah. four days it grind and then it popped off. I didn't get into the logistics of what the hell happened. Right, right. So all I know is you came out to fix something and another thing happened. And to me, it's like, make it the way it was before I even called you. You well, know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I do know what you're saying, but to make you feel better, I think if he said to you when he was out there, I fixed your motor, but your gate needs to be fixed too, the hinges. And then he fixed those hinges. That would cost you what it's costing you now anyway. They just wouldn't, you wouldn't have had the incident where they fell on the driveway. Otherwise, you'd be where you were financially. I wouldn't beat yourself up over that one, man. All right. Well, yeah. re regardless, my point to the story is when you have somebody come out and do work for you, uh, yeah. whether it be on an appliance, uh, a motor, uh, your garage door, whatever it might be, there's no set price on that. You know, like you could compare what a TV costs, Samsung, 70 yeah. inch on Amazon, but then you could go to Best Buy and compare that with this stuff. Yeah. There's no, like, I don't have anything to relate it to. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's it's a, it's frustrating. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? I, I, I hear you. Especially because it's also, like, uh, related to, like, you could go online and say, hey, how much does it cost to get da-da-da square footage of new gutties, right? And they go, well, usually this much. And you're like, okay, well, what if you don't live two and a half hours outside of Milwaukee? Yeah. Then how much does it cost for fucking gutters? Right? You know, it depends on where you're living. Like where I live, it's going to be different for the same job, obviously. Then even if you had a house like mine, it would still be more where you live. It would be more in New York, uh, you know, closer to the city. So Yeah, I, I just don't know where they're coming up with the pricing. That That's uh, that's all I'm trying to get at is yeah. are they pulling the stuff out of their ass? How the, I mean, yeah, you buy the parts, but then, okay, I'm thinking, okay, the, the motor he's getting, I'm even so sick to go, what kind of motor are you getting, right? Then he gives me the motor. Then I go shopping to see what the motor cost, right? Because he, he he could buy tell you the motor's ten grand, right? Right. And, right. and he lists it on the thing. Yeah. But then I go and I look. I go, it ain't ten grand. It's nine grand. Why are you charging an extra thousand dollars on the motor? <laughs> right. Just, right. Just, just buy the parts. <laughs> give me that cost, and you charge me for the labor, right? Right. Or 
I'll go buy all the parts. I give it to you, and you just charge me for the labor. <laughs> oh, man, my head's exploding, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Why don't you just pay the extra thousand and go, you know, you know, do your thing, guy. Enjoy your day. I, I should. <laughs> I should. But I don't like somebody out there going, I got this guy. You know, yeah. I, I don't like somebody knowing as they're driving around. Oh, I'm soaking this guy for the gate. I don't like that feeling. I know. Yeah. I, <laughs> I want to, but then there's another part of me that goes, if you give these guys any lip or hassle, do they do a half ass job? Do they call their guys and go, listen, this guy was bitching about the hinge and the motor. Do me a favor. Loosen the screws a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's a tough call. This, yeah, they have that, just that little moment where they're like, ah, that nuts not fitting. It's just not going in. I wish it was square. I got to, you know, and that moment where maybe they go back to the truck and spend a half hour finding the perfect nut. But <laughs> the U.S. Circus says, they go, ah, fuck it. Right? <laughs> Let's go home. You know, that'll come loose in two years. Hopefully I'll be working somewhere else by then. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, but it's just every time I turn around, man, it's something that's breaking. It's just like, okay, you got the gate going, but eh, the sprinkler head is is not coming up, and then and then the guy comes out and he goes, eh, it's just not the sprinkler head. It's the hose underneath that's broken. You got to fix that. You know, it's like it's never just what you see. It's like yeah. if you see a little rash on your arm, it's not yeah. because of the detergent that you're using. It's like, oh, you got melanoma. You know uh, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, man. It's it's never good news. It's never, it's never, yeah. You, know, you, you didn't realize you got to just tighten the sprinkler heads once in a while. It just came loose. You just got to screw it on. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't even charge me. Buy me a cup of coffee next time you see me. I never get that. I never get that, right? <laughs> Oh. I, I always get, well, we can do it right and really fix it, or we can just patch the problem for now, you know? And you're like, oh, shit, right? God. So that's what I've been dealing with the last uh, last three weeks, a lot of stuff falling apart. I, I the, the house is at, you know, it's a, and, and, and this is the same old story. You buy a house, right? Yeah. That's not brand new. And then you start living in it, and then you start seeing what all that needs to be done, which I think, and I know this is not realistic, but don't you think you should get, like, a test run on the house? Because they do, like, yes. oh, this is broken, this is broken. You know, you do yeah. the, the checklist or whatever it is before you buy a house, and you go, that's broken, and then they give you a credit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like, okay, go fix it or they'll fix it or whatever. But you don't really see it until you start living in it. You know, you don't start yeah. seeing it. The air conditioner doesn't work that well in the kids' room. That doesn't happen, yeah. you know, it, yeah. overnight. Oh, you know I mean? my, my house, the last plumber who came in, I'm at, when you do my wash in our house, the pipes rattle in the wall. Oh, it wakes the dead. It wakes the dead, you know? <laughs> but nobody's going to turn on the washing machine when they come to your house. They're just going to go, oh, look, a red and white, a red and red dead washer dryer. Look like, great, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> just fucking wa washing a T-shirt. Wall walls are shaking. Yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> it should be a year, too, with my shit. I got to live there with my shit. I'm not going to lay on your bed and get a feel for the house. Get all your shit out, put my shit in. <laughs> and I really get settled in, right? And then I'll let you know same time next year. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. Forget the credits. Forget all that. Right. We'll agree on the price. <clears throat> and then I'll live in the house in a year. In a year, you're going to get a list of all that's wrong with your house <clears throat> after I lived in it. <laughs> because, because you might have not had a problem with... The refrigerator door not being fully closed. I do. 
<laughs> I got a bathroom door that don't close all the way. I got to I gotta shave the hinge to get it closed. Jackie's like, fuck it. We just leave it open. No one needs to even know it closes because it's like a second door for Sadie. But yeah, same thing, man. Everything is masked. Like, <laughs> Everything is masked until it, you start living in it. And if they say to you, well, if you're going to live in my house for a year, where, where are we going to live? And you look at them and go, you go live in the house that you want to buy for a year. <laughs> and then you let them know what you need. <laughs> I'm buying your house. You go to where you're going to go. You do the same thing with that homeowner. And everybody, it all works out. Now, if see, that's, that's, the, that's what's missing here because when people don't take care of their homes and mm -hmm. then they go to sell it, they're not penalized. Right. They're penalized right. here and there because, oh, uh, the right. tiles cracked here. Okay, I give you whatever, $400 yeah. for that. But I'm talking the inner workings of a home, like you're saying with the dishwasher, <laughs> you wash your T-shirt and five, five houses down, they're waking up from a nap because your washing machine is banging against yeah. the, the pipes, yeah. right? You don't know. I mean, like, let's say you're walking around the house and they and the real estate agent goes and they have a dryer and a washer. Can you go do a load? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Actually, I want to say you go get a cup of coffee, go get lunch, come back. I'm going to do a load by myself. I don't need the realtor hovering over me, telling me how great the fucking washer is and how they have soft water in this town. And just <laughs> shut up. All right. Just beat it. You're distracting me. That's all you're trying to do. So I don't see the nuts and bolts of this shithole. To your point. My carpenter, the master craftsman, I told you, master craftsman. Yeah. So he's going to put in a new floor for us over our floor, our wood floor, and he's showing me a bump. So he goes down to my basement, which is like, you know, it's raw. It's all, you know, dirt, but I put rocks down there, but it's like, you know, whole, old house, 1885. And he goes, you see this beam? And it's a giant beam that goes across, and it's cut. And my air ducts would uh, my air con my heating ducts were put in. And he goes, when they put in the heating ducts, they cut this beam. And then they put this big tree trunk here as an extra post. That's all the houses. Uh, and he goes, so the whole floor is sagging a little bit over time. So I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, your living room is a little slower than your hallway. And I'm like, man. He goes, so if we put this down, it's not going to be level. I'm like, holy, what do we do? And he goes, we're gonna we're gonna jack the floor. We're going to, I go, what? He goes, we're going to slowly, I'm going to bring these steel jacks. And he goes, I'm going to put in a footer, like this giant beam that goes across. And you do it slowly because you don't want to crack the plaster or anything in the house. So he goes, so about every half hour, I'm going to turn them just a little, just a, <laughs> lifted my living room about an inch. All right. <laughs> no? And he goes, now it's good to go. For for a long time, seven years I'm living here. I don't even know my living room's collapsing, <laughs> collapsing, bro. Right. So <laughs> to your point, when I bought the house, all I did was walk around, and go, Jack, look, wood floors in the living room. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> look at little I know. I'm sinking as I'm saying this shit. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying. There's no way you would know that no. on 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 walking through the house with a realtor. Yeah, you got you just you go got a little, little bump. What oh, is a bump? Must the, the wood must be a little warped. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and you, shit. I mean, even if they walk you through the house you bought through every nook and cranny, you'd be it'd, it'd be three days. You'd have to get a hotel room down the block. <laughs> People go, I thought you picked the house. Yeah, no, we did. We're doing an inspection. Takes three and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> Team. Oh, God. Uh, you oh, know what man. you need, I'm thinking, though, bro? I'm thinking you're at the point, and I think this is not only financially a money saver, but just a, a, a for life. Uh guy living on the property that just is the handyman all day every day everything okay we have a guy doesn't live on the property it's like a house management company they have several houses in their portfolio and you know if the if something needs fixing they'll but it's not like uh 
the guy, it's not like the guy's walking the property from eight to five. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. L- Lana and I are basically the, the general managers of the house. So we'll go out, we'll notice a light here. The refrigerator's broken in the in the one of the guest rooms. Uh, it, the ice is not being made. You know, like there's always like something that's glitching, uh, and we're 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 noticing that. However, uh, we're in the process of interviewing someone. Uh, we need a we need a personal assistant in our life. We just haven't had that in a while. You don't have uh, one? No, no. We we had one. Uh, we we've, we've been trying out people here and there yeah, yeah. and just trying to find the right fit uh but yeah we're 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 running this ship uh you know alone and it's gotten i mean during the pandemic obviously there was nothing nothing that needed to be done but now that stuff is starting to cook up and I need someone kind of handling stuff. So, yeah, I, I like your idea, though. I, I like, uh, you know, every time I go to a hotel and I look around, I see that, you know, they have an engineering guy yeah. that's walking around. I used to work at the Four Seasons Hotel, so I used to know the head of engineering. He would walk around uh, the hotel property making sure the door hinges were on, the knobs aren't falling off. The, right. the, if a chair, if the leg broke on a chair in the windows lounge, he would fix the chair. Yeah. There's that guy, you know. I mean, you could get bogged down. Uh, this you could get bogged down with just fixing stuff around your house, and you don't yeah. got any. You don't got any time to go to work or spend with your family. Absolutely, and, and it builds up. And dude, but I, my, the guy I'm talking about, I'm talking. I, he becomes family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like Christmas gifts. Like that's all he does is take care of the house. Like to t- take that gate, right? That gate goes down. I'll give a new name now. Instead of getting on your phone, you're just going, my gate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he comes around to Ben from in the middle of doing something. It's just everything is tight. One guy, tight. I know. It would be nice if Mikey could handle the gate, but there is some, you know, I mean, the, that's a gate company. That, but then he a, calls the gate guy and he yeah, tells me. This, this is the problem I got. Mikey don't think like I think. So I yeah. give it the responsibility over to somebody else. And they go, uh, yeah, Mikey's, Mikey charged us Saturday. Or uh, sorry, the gate company charged us for Saturday. And then I would have said to, to Mikey, why? He, huh. They broke it. Oh, no. I, you know, and then I got to explain to Mikey. No, you see, uh, I, what, yeah, yeah. What, what I know, what I know, <laughs> yeah, 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 is not taught overnight. This is a lifetime of living with my father. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be so, nice if Mikey was like, listen, no, he was going to charge us 10 for the motor. I just ordered it and I'm going to pick it up tomorrow for nine and then he's going to put it in for 200. <laughs> 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 Mikey, yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice if Mikey thought that way, but. It's a rarity, bro. You got a relative that's got a little of this in them that wants to come live out in the sunshine, free use of my, the pool. Yeah, my dad. <laughs> that's right, man. But your dad can do, he, could, he goes, why do I need to do that? I can live here and not do any of it. I'll just commentate when I want to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. If I had my dad, if I had my dad as the house manager, this place would be running at a level of a five-star, five-diamond resort in Istanbul. He would have it... (laughs) He would have it dialed in. He would get the best price. And not only that, he he would watch the people work. My dad's the type of guy that will hire someone and then go out and watch him work all day. Oh, (laughs) that's the worst, man. When they do the hover... They chat with you pretending like they really give a shit about what you got to say. It's a small talk <laughs> while I watch you work. <laughs> and he's, and some, and I tell you, he's right 95% of the time. He'll tell the guy how to do his own job. He, Cause my dad, my dad, before he got old, he would do a lot of the work around the house, him and my grandfather. Yeah. So especially my grandfather, my grandfather could, you know, build anything. So, my father was going, why are you putting the cement there? Don't you should put it over there? And the, and the guy goes, I, yeah, I guess. So my dad's correcting the guy as he's working. So 
if I get him out here to manage the whole thing, it, it, it save me 30%. <laughs> That's it. You'd be like, Dad, do we have guests? Because uh, we're making money by the I'm looking at the books. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so i gotta i gotta sidestep here and go yeah. into um yeah. can't talk too much about this but i just want to kind of generalize for the tv show uh when i went fishing and i showed you some of the the photos yeah, yeah. okay yeah. uh i got seasick and I thought I took the per correct precautions to do this. Now, let me preface this by saying, over the summer, I was in Naples, Florida. I went on a boat. It wasn't a fishing boat. It was we went fishing, but it was like a um, like a speed boat, pretty pretty big. I mean, th nah. probably thirty feet, thirty feet. Yeah, and, you know, it's like one of those things where you lay up front, you tan. There's a little cabin underneath. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and we, we went in the Bay of Naples and, and, and f went fishing. No, no real wake. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been on a boat in, uh, I went on a cruise ship. No problem. I've right. been on uh, a boat in, in Italy for our honeymoon, you know, same type of boat in the Amalfi coast. No problem. This was a 65 foot commercial fishing boat. Wow. In the, Paci in the Pacific ocean. <laughs> oh, wow, man. One hour out. Like oh. One hour. Right? Like full speed at one hour out? Full speed. One hour Holy out. Holy shit. Took a Dramamine, non-drowsy, which is a motion sickness pill, oh, over man. the counter. Oh, I, I over take the them all the time when I do boats. Okay. Over the counter. <clears throat> um, Three minutes in, I'm on the floor. Dramamine don't even... Apparently, the side effect of a Dramamine is nausea. No. I'm I'm out, right? Uh, my buddy had one of those patches that you get prescribed, and you yeah. put it on the back of your neck. Yeah. But you're looking at those ingredients. It's like you wake up the next morning, you don't even know the name of your family. You know what I'm <laughs> Not to mention, bro. I've seen a few of those at the lake this past summer. It's a little fucking bouncy, a little patch behind your ear. I just assume stay off the water and put that thing on my neck. <laughs> I, I agree. I don't want anything on my body that lets anybody else know I got a weakness. <laughs> oh, I, th I thought you were going to say, because that's so true. But I also, I don't want anything on my body that's going to make anybody go, the fuck is that? <laughs> Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right there. And then they go, oh, oh, a weakness. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. He gets seasick. Sebastian gets seasick. Oh, he needs a I can't, but did it work for him? He was fine. He was oh. catching fish left and right. But he woke up the next morning and he and he said he, he had like a hangover from this damn thing. So oh, man. I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, what was what. And you're right, as as far as the patch is concerned. You got a patch on your neck. That's a conversation piece for whoever sees you that day. So, you know, you're at the boat, you're at the lake, and then another couple, they, okay, bye, Pete, and they get in the car, and the first thing they say as soon as the door's shut, you see the Band-Aid or whatever the hell he had on the back yeah, of his neck? Yeah, 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 what is that? And they talk about that for 15 yeah. minutes yeah. as they as as they go home. I, uh, dude, I uh, can improv it. I can do it, right? It's like... Oh, honey, it's a patch when you get seasick. What? A patch? Who has that? Well, some people get seasick, you know. I guess the patient's not been on too many boats. I guess not. <laughs> I never heard him do a boat bit in his act. Neither. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, yeah. The whole thing, guy. Uh, it's ridiculous. Are, are, are you okay on boats? No, I take Dramamine because I'm just like that. I get sick, but uh, that usually does the trick for me. But if I don't take it, yeah, I get sick. Haven't puked, but just like you, just dying. And the minute I get off the boat, I'm fine. But I just, I'm not, I'm not, the, the, the sea is like, I'm not a sea guy. Whatever to sea. I'm not a sea guy either. I love water. I me, love the me ocean. Too. I love going in the ocean. It's like medicine for me. It's just getting on a boat. And and the, the guys that are on the boat that do this for a living, listen, 
I was uh, I was on the floor in the in the bathroom, just laid out, right? Hold on. Laid out on the floor in the bathroom. And I and it, and I get really dramatic. I know that. I mean, you talk to my my mother, my wife, anybody that really knows me. I it's a lot of theatrics over here, right? So if I'm if I'm seasick and somebody else is seasick, you would think if you were, if you were looking at both of us, you would go, "Oh no, he's he's got some weird disease," you know? <laughs> so. Like there were five other people that were seasick on the boat and I didn't know who they were because they weren't laid out. They were like handling it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. No. Could you handle it? Like if you were with a group of Navy SEALs and you were going out for an expedition with them, would you still lay out like that? Or are you like, lay hey. out. Don't matter. It don't matter. All coolness goes out the door when I'm sick. So <clears throat> I'm not I'm not trying to be Mr. Macho for anybody. I was in the middle of the interview on the boat for the show. Yeah. And I got up and I walked away. I didn't say nothing. The guy's talking to me. <laughs> I, I, I I said excuse me. <laughs> I got, <laughs> Unbelievable. Did you ever start feeling better after a while or what? So this is what happened. I went into the bathroom, and this is where I felt like I really had lost my man card. Yeah. The guy who's like second in command of the boat, he goes, "Here, man, come on, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of here. You got to get out in the open air. This, you can't be in this closed environment. Here's some water." I go, nah, nah, nah. "Now I'm green, fully green, right? Like a green yellow tint I got going on." <laughs> yeah. And he goes, "Come on, man, get up, get up." And I'm I getting up, and and I'm on this guy's shoulders with another guy. I, I literally look like I'm coming out of a pub in Ireland after a nine-hour bender. Oh, what the fuck, bro? This is crazy. That is so, you know, not manly. I don't know what else to say. That's Holy what I'm saying. God. The guy was probably looking at me going, look at this pussy. Hey. Right? It's like he's right. carrying his wife out after a good <laughs> wedding, a fun wedding, back to the car. <laughs> so they lay me out on this little thing on the deck, and I'm sitting there, and finally I start, like, feeling that, not, not feeling great, but not as bad. Yeah. So um, I had to ask the guy. I go, I got to ask you, this is the second in command of the boat? Yeah. I go, you see this a lot? Because I want to figure out where I fall right. in the general population when it comes to seasickness, right? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, we had 50, 50 people on the boat yesterday. 12 of them were just like you. So I felt a little bit better. Right. Uh, he failed. He failed to mention they were they were nine years old. Oh, yeah, but right. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but if it, how about this? If he said it like this, we had fifty people on the boat yesterday. Thirty eight of them were fine. That's a different statement. It does. It, <laughs> that's, that's, but what thirty eight? This thirty eight. I, I came across thirty eight more men <laughs> than you yesterday. <laughs> 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 oh man, yeah. So, <laughs> man, no, I didn't listen. So, it, it's uh, crazy. It, did, did you come around? Uh, yeah, I came. You know, I came around, but it, you know, it definitely affected me throughout the, the the evening. I came home. I was in bed by seven thirty. Uh, I slept. I slept great. I slept for about a good seven and a half hours. The next day, I woke up, no problem. Yeah, but. I thought I could do it, you know, the whole the whole thing about going out there in the first place. And I knew I get seasick, but I thought maybe I could do it just because I've been on some some boats in in, in the past that I've done fairly well. And then I'm thinking I got a son, right? And it'd be nice to take my son fishing. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, if my if my son was nine, and say he was nine years old, and I was going to take him fishing for the first time on a boat. And he saw his father like that. Yeah. Well, do, you, was, do you think that would scar my son for the rest of his life? Going, I, no. my my dad 
Because I never saw my dad yeah. in pain. I never saw my dad in pain. Yeah, I know. I, Gro- no. Growing, growing up, have you? Did you ever see your dad go, "Ow"? I, I, I never seen him like even flinch with anything. No, not even show v- vulnerability. Like just, <laughs> just get mad, just get mad, you know. But like, I'm, tr- I can't remember if I saw him cry until I was in a grown man, you know. None of it. I'm right there with you. I mean, but dude, doing that on the boat—that's like getting caught jerking off in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on! Are you kidding me, bro? That is gonna scar. He's like, oh, I remember when my dad took me out. Fit. I mean, but by the way, you don't gotta go an hour out into the Pacific Ocean. You and Caruso aren't going shark fishing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, when I take him out, I'm gonna take him on a lake. Yeah, nice. it's just like. I don't want my son seeing any of that weakness with his father until his yeah. father's like 80. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like I'm seeing it now with my dad where he's falling apart, right? I mean, this like the shoulder, the legs, the the back, the you know, he woke up, he's like, I got a spot on my my hand. Don't look right. You know, like oh, yeah. I'm just starting to I just starting to see the crumbling, the crumbling of a man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny when they're around you and they're joking, they're fun. You're like, do they close the door and go, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm always trying to read them to see how happy I'm going to be when I start having spots on my hand. You know, am I going to be cool with that or am I going to be fuck? I feel like I'm going to be like, fuck, I'm fucking dying. And you're asking me what kind of coffee I want. Fuck the coffee. Are you fucking, <laughs> you know, or are you just like at peace with it? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a tipping point at some age where things start to, to fall apart. Yeah. And I don't know when I get 75, 80 years old and the body starts to deteriorate, how I'm going to, I, I know myself, I'll probably be with my kids and we'll be at the dinner table. I'll be telling a story. But in the back of my mind, I'm going, my shoulder don't work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, 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 that's that will always be in the back of my mind. Oh, I can't. Yeah. I, I, it's going to be hard getting out of this seat tonight. You know, it, <laughs> right. But, but to them, you're like, sure, I'll go swimming later. Sounds fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> even even when my dad passed away, my mom's like, oh, he had a da da da. I'm like, what? The f-? You know, he just starts rattling off the things that he had going on that you didn't even know about. <laughs> you like, when oh. I saw him, he was doing cannonballs in the pool with Sadie. <laughs> <laughs> so so your 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 family is the type of family that they don't share any of those ailments. I mean like they no. don't they don't tell you your mother don't tell you nothing about anything. I mean I know your mother no. don't go to the doctor but Yeah. No, they don't. I didn't even call not, my family when I got hip surgery. They called me. Oh my god. It, it bro. My family, it's like a, a CNN ticker news. Uh, I call my mom. What's going on? I don't know. I got on my foot. I got something in my foot. I gotta go to the foot doctor today. You know, there's always something going on. I don't know. I woke up and I, I got in, in my throat. It doesn't feel like a sore throat. It feels like cancer. I'm like Jesus Christ. So I, I'm filled in. <laughs> on a minute-to-minute basis right, right. of the ailments of my <laughs> of my parents, yeah. and, and and vice versa. And again, L- Lana doesn't understand. Lana's quite like you know your family. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> this this uh, shooting that happened in Colorado recently, right? Yeah. It's it's my my brother-in-law lives in in Colorado, uh, near there. I mean, not n- near there, but around there. I'd say maybe a 30, 40 mile radius. So at the end of the day, I I tapped the line. I go, you talked to your brother today? She goes, no, what? I go, there's a massacre at a grocery store. She all right? She goes, there's a massacre. Now, (laughs) you ever talk to somebody when there's like a big event that happens? Like this ain't 1981, right? Where, 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 you know, it was on the news and if you didn't catch it, you didn't, you know, you don't know what's going on, right? Up until about 1985, you could say to someone, "Did you hear about?" You know, 
But yeah. after 1985, it's <laughs> how about? <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, yeah. man. <laughs> Lot is still living in 85 where yeah. I'm like, there was I go, there was a massacre at the the, the thing. Ten, 10 people got shot, a cop, and this and that. He's 51 years. I know the whole thing. 51 years old, he got three kids. I, I know the whole story. She yeah. goes, there was? Yeah. Now, now, th this my family, this is how tuned in they are with what's going on here. When the fires are happening, the fire could be in San Francisco, right? Yeah. My, my father will call, I heard there's fires out there. You all right? Like, he just hears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> California fire. My son lives there. Is he all right, right? It's five five hours north to me. And this yeah. guy's calling to see if, if if the fire got into my backyard yet. Uh, right. Well, you know part of that is, though? Because he wants to tap out on watching the fire. And if anyone <laughs> he gives a shit about is not near the fire, he can change the channel. You know? I mean, that's what you do. That's what you do with your brother-in-law. You call Boulder. You all right? All right. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a, you know, that's a uh, crazy, sad situation, but no, awful. I got to tell you, when you take regular big news, not something like that, but when you talk to someone, like you said, with Lana and I, Jackie can be like that a lot too. I'm like, especially with politics, I'm like, but you hear about da da da, like, yeah, President Tripp three times going up the stairs and she don't know about it three days later. What the f Are you kidding me, man? I mean, as soon as he didn't even, by the third trip, I already had three texts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just off the first two people text me going, oh, wait, one more. Oh, one more. You know, so and on one hand, aren't you like a little jealous of people like that? I'm like, man, I wish I was just tapped out on everything like that. I wish I could do that. You know, just be like, I mean, she's dealing with the family and dealing with Sadie and all. It's not like she's staring at butterflies, but just to not think about or be yeah. so in tune with the news, you know. Yeah, so detached where you're like, no, what what happened? It was a week ago. No, I, I yeah. didn't see it, you know? like <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Only caring about shit you can see? You're like, you know, everything. <laughs> it's like, like it's 1792, everything. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> no news. <laughs> <laughs> right? oh, that leads me God. to something I got to ask you, all right? Yeah, yeah. What's your take on this from a man etiquette point? Uh, same as you, I've been trying to do a little more, like, no more reading for me than news on my phone or social media. So I started adapting a technique where whenever I'm waiting in a waiting room, I first started a couple weeks ago with the dentist, I don't want to read or anything, I got my mask on. Uh, before they call me in, I'm like, I'm going to nap. I, I take naps at during the day at home. I'm like, let me start seeing. I'm just going to put the phone down, close my eyes, right? Nice. Got about five minutes in. I hear, Miss, I just hear, I'm, I, I'm almost in like deep sleep. And I hear, Miss Corielli? I look up, there's the woman by the thing. And I go in. It was good because I was worried, right? Next one, eye doctor. I go in, I sign in, sit in the waiting room. Then they bring me into a smaller waiting room, which I wasn't expecting. I'm like, I'm going to bang it out. This one, there's a lot of people around me, so I did chin down, chin down. <laughs> and, and with her, I heard her hit the, her hand on the door, and I look up, and boom, I'm good. So then last week, I told you I went to visit my mom. I drive six hours, and when I get there, I do errands for her and stuff, and she needed her car serviced. So she goes, take it to this little dealership. They know how to deal with that, you f with the car, and dad likes them, go there. It's a little mom-and-pop shop, right? The guy's going to tune it up. He goes, has me sit in the waiting room. Nice size waiting room TV on. <clears throat> Do my nap thing. Uh, and then I hear another guy come in with his son and they're chatting. But they're on the other end of the room, no problem. So now I'm like down and I'm napping. Bro, I get a, a nudge, physical touch. <laughs> and, I, and I start, I look up, fucking mechanic poking me, <laughs> saying that he tried to wake me up and I wasn't waking up. How hard were you? Were you yelling like Pete or were you going, Mr. Corey, Mr. Corey, you know? So uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, two, my two takes are one, white trash, falling asleep, needed to, be, <laughs> needed to be poked awake. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> 
<laughs> you think he's saying something to the other mechanics about me? Or well, okay, let, let me let me take you through where, where my my head's going. I believe if you're public napping under the age of seventy, there's yeah. there's reason for concern. No, like, no, it's like multitasking, bro. Oh, I mean, like, I literally go home. Uh, Jackie's like, oh, I bet you're going to lay on the couch a little like you do. I, I banged it out at the miter shop. What are you talking about? <laughs> if I walked into a waiting room and saw a guy that looked like you sleeping. Yeah. yeah that's I, I would, if I was at a doctor's office, I would tell the nurse, is this guy all right? Like, I, 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 would, I would think we would have to take a pulse. <laughs> just, but, just, but, but but couldn't you though couldn't you pretty much feasibly like right now if this show ended and you had to go someplace uh my point is couldn't you close your eyes and probably fall asleep for 10 minutes almost at any given time no i'm not like that i'm not a type of guy that would could fall asleep anywhere I, not I anywhere have... at home on your couch like like where you are right now you couldn't close your eyes for 10 minutes uh yeah. Not not right now, no. I, I don't no. think I could fall asleep now. You talk to me about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I mean, four or five hours from now, I could bang out a good, good half an hour, right? That's what I'm saying. So why is it, but why is it unacceptable to do it around other people? You're not talking to them anyway. I know. It's just the level of comfort for me. I cannot sit in a waiting room chair and just go like this. And go to sleep. I've yeah. always had a, I've always had a problem with that. <laughs> and, and if a guy that young, like you, you know, falls asleep in public, yeah. Know, if I see a seventy-year-old man sleeping, I go, all right, this guy's been through a life. He's probably been in a couple wars. <laughs> he's, he's got, you know, he's got a family, got kids, he got a wife for fifty years. You know, yeah. beat, beating him out, and he's at the, he's at the end of his rope. It's probably the only time he gets any peace and quiet when he comes to the doctor's <laughs> office. Right. He's just gonna bang out a nap. <coughs> but a guy who's you know fifty years old, mouth open at the Midas store, <laughs> I'm like, call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> he got a crystal meth head in here getting his fucking car tuned up. <laughs> well, you know, I got I gotta say I got the mask on and the shades and usually a hat or a hood, so it's hard to tell. But you bring up a good point. I gotta, I gotta rethink this because I actually, I get disgusted when I see people sleeping in places they shouldn't be sleeping. I, I, I can, I can accept a plane, but anywhere else, when I see someone banging out a nap, like you ever see them uh, the nap on a, on a on a park bench, just a little. I'm oh like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, no. go home with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you I know, know I, man. You know, you know, I can't stand, and I've seen this, and I don't even understand it. You walk into like a coffee bean or a Starbucks, and there's someone sleeping on the table, like head down. You, you uh, ever get that? Head down <laughs> at a coffee shop. Like <laughs> caffeine didn't kick in yet, or are you coming off it? With like, yeah, I know. Uh, <coughs> so, so let me ask you this: I had a, um, I had this discussion with my sister the other day at a doctor's office when you're sitting there waiting to get called up, and it's your turn. Let's say there's 10 people in the waiting room, whatever, five, 10 people, whatever it is. And they come out and they go, uh, Pete Corielli, do you shoot up out of your seat and go right in? Like, you don't want to have anybody put the name to the person or do you kind of like gather your stuff? Eh, like that. <laughs> Right, what right. I'm basically saying, yeah, are yeah. you are you ready, ready for the roll. roll the roll call when it, you know like like yes. do you have your wallet out or do you have a book out and no, you have to pack I'm, a bag I'm, and then go? Are you in before like I'm in before anybody? Like people go who and then <laughs> the door is shutting. Uh, yeah, I hear you, dude. I because I'm I'm fast too. Although I I usually I just went in for uh, X ray for uh, when I was getting the colonoscopy, they had to do something. I had to wait, and I eyeball now total white trash where the waste paper basket is. Especially the dentist that do this, because I got to spit out the Nicorette right after they call my name before I go in. Um, and if the doctor put that thing in my mouth, I got the gum. But 
when someone else gets called and I turn around and I, I see them, like you say, and they, and they always, they lean over their own chair and they're picking up their <laughs> shit and, and you're like, don't you want to get the fuck out of here? Like, like the faster you get in, the faster you get out, you're like, yay, hey, what are you, you, you're in a garden and you're taking your book and blanket and going home now. <laughs> shit. <laughs> plus plus i start sizing up that person you know i'm looking yeah. at that person going you know it, it just a variety of thoughts go through your mind is this their second appointment are they coming back right, because right. then the first time they said something's wrong <laughs> it's just too much for other people to gather information about you i feel like you're on right. in, in a spotlight as soon as they say your name everybody goes to see who's their who they're calling and before they even notice, I'm in the room with my Football. pants off, ready to go. <laughs> ready to go, man. That's the other thing, too. When they call someone else, and you ever see them when they're, like, waddling in, like, or they're really, they're really sick or they're really, like, hurt? And in my head, all I'm thinking is, I'm going to have to wait longer because you're so fucked up that <laughs> he's going to take longer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like groceries and you got a full cart and I'm buying a ham. <laughs> yeah, just, just fucking let me cut, gimp. Come on. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> hey, man, I'm going to be that guy someday. I might do that. I may look at an 18-year-old kid and go, you want to cut? He's just going to squeeze you. He's just going to squeeze your testicle and have you cough. You'll be out in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They should schedule the people with all those problems at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the people that could take 15 minutes or you could never get out of a hospital room again after this visit. <laughs> you know? Could go either way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> on the phone call, they should go, what's the problem? Uh, I don't know. I'm pissing blood and uh, <laughs> my stomach hurts. I get up. I got a headache. And they say, well, we, we got a 5.30 p.m. for you. Yeah. And th that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's your time. It's the end of the day. You're the last appointment. And I don't want to scare you, but pack an overnight bag. <laughs> 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 I'm right there with you, man. You're gonna put that guy right before the guy who's gotta go in for a fucking physical because he's starting a new job. You know? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, come on. Yeah, you can't intermix the people like that. You gotta have serious conditions at the end of the day, and you know, yeah, you know, check up once a year. Check up nine o'clock in the morning. All right. Yeah. Chances are everything's going to be all right. We're going to take some blood pressure. We're going to look at your eyes, tap your kneecaps, and you're out. Yeah. But if you woke up in a puddle of piss, 5.30 p.m. <laughs> 5.30 p.m. <laughs> By the way, uh, they still doing uh, the kneecap thing? I don't think I've gotten that in a while. I, I got that. I got well, that. What does that do that anyway, really? I, don't know. I, mean, I just I just like it. I, I just like the uh, I, I the whole thing. I used to like thing. it too. I don't get it anymore. I used to. I I mean, did you do you do you try to see what he's looking for your knee to do when he hits it with that little I, rubber tip? I think it's for like. Um, and again, don't quote me here. Hey, this is hey. this is <laughs> this is, this is, this is <laughs> no facts, no education. Right, right. I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want. It. <laughs> <laughs> There's no bibliography, no <laughs> references here. <laughs> yeah. But I think what it is, it's so if if you clank the knee or below the platella and you have a reaction that the the receptors are working. It's more of like a nerve. I think it's a nerve test more than anything else. If they did it and your leg was dead, that yeah. means that maybe the nerves aren't communicating with the brain. Again, this is yeah, right. maybe what it is. <laughs> right. Hey, listen. Uh, you, but you're making me think, you ever like at a party or something, if I say that, what's with the knee, and then you say that? This is why I don't even want to hang out with Harvard and Yale grads. Because you ever have someone in a room that really does know the answer? And he's like, actually, it's that, uh, yeah, hey, what the fuck? We were having fun with the maybe, and we're not sure. What the fuck? You know? I like well, your what... thing better. It might be dead. If it's dead, if your leg don't move, hey, they might have to amputate. Not then, but five years down the line, you may be, you may be a fucking pirate. <laughs> 
if, if if it's me and you talking, I have yeah. no problem sharing something like that. But right. if I'm in mixed company, yeah, I generally take a step back <laughs> and I wait and I wait to see if anybody knows the answer in the group. Oh, and yeah. and then generally somebody does, and I'm like, I'm glad I didn't know. <laughs> <my mom." laughs> I hear you. Whoa, boy, I've been way off. I was <laughs> way off. <laughs> no, because something like that could stifle your the rest of your night. I mean, if you open your mouth like, you know, and the real reason is that they do that to see if your, uh, whatever, your hamstring <laughs> is is intact or whatever, and I'm going, yo, it's so your brain and your nerves. I'm the talk of the party, the rest of the party. They're going to they're gonna break off. And they'll be at the punch bowl, and the guy will tap the other guy. And go, I was just in a conversation about the neat thing, and this idiot over there thinks it's a nerve thing. And I'm and I'm across the room having a beer, and I have no idea they're ripping me to shreds. Oh, I do, man. And, but but you know, I feel like you're covering yourself when you're going. Hey, take it for a grain of salt. I'm not sure. Don't quote, don't quote me on this. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. That, you're basically saying this is actually pure entertainment. My answer. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I love it, man. That's it. Oh. Everything I do, everything I do is for entertainment. But it, it nothing <laughs> is to shed any knowledge or education. Basically, everything I do in my life is to crack a, a smile on somebody's face. That is it. <laughs> I mean, hey, man, that's like that's like your your mission statement. You know, our company has a mission statement. <laughs> that is it. Oh God. Oh man, I gotta tell you. All right, this is. Uh, this has been great. I got to go pick up Serafina from school. Uh, right. I, I got to thank the listeners. We're getting a lot of feedback here. Really liking the podcast. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. We, as much as you guys enjoy it, we enjoy it three times more doing I did, it. Bro. I mean, I had such uh, laughs right now, man. Just love hanging oh, out, man. man. I do. I'm with you. I do appreciate great. it with the listeners. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no. Great, great time. Uh, everybody have a wonderful weekend. We will see you right back here on the Pete and Sebastian show next week. Take care. 